Hey there, are you looking to add product images to your BigCommerce store? In this video, I'm gonna show you just how to do that and some considerations you may not have thought about. My name is Cal, uh, I'm a developer, a store owner, and I run the e-commerce growth community for store owners just like you and me. And every week I post more e-commerce videos, so if you find this one helpful, subscribe and hit the bell. Let's get going. All right, I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you guys a couple things here. First off, I have a test product set up and before I show you guys how to how to add your products I think we just need to talk about aspect ratios for just a minute I would be neglect if I didn't tell you guys explicitly make sure all of your product images in your whole store follow the same aspect ratio what is aspect ratio it is the ratio of the width of the image to the height of the image. So if it's a square, it's one to one. If it's not a square, it's something else to something else. 90% of the stores out there should just use square images. It's the easiest to remember. It looks consistently good on all devices. If you do have a taller product and 100% of your products are tall, maybe you want something a little taller or if you're getting artistic. Um, there's not that many times where I would recommend a wider image because it's just going to look not great on mobile. However, if you were selling something like maybe shoes and you're only selling shoes, never socks, never shoelaces, then, you know, maybe, maybe there's a case to be made for um, a wider image. But nine times out of ten, maybe more, you should just be using a square. And let me show you an easy way to do this is to use canva.com. Now there's lots of tutorials out there. I'm not going to go over it um, too in depth, but the nice thing about Canva is you can create a template and you can say this template is 2000 by 2000. And then any image that you add on here is always going to follow the same aspect ratio. Um, if you have a paid account, which is extremely cheap, they will even image compress it for you. And um, you know, it's a great program. So I've just set up this, um, this, this uh, example where I've just dragged in a picture of a water bottle I found on one of their free images. Obviously with your real products, you should be using photographs that you've taken or that somebody has taken instead of fake ones that, are, you know, that you find on the, in the clip art or whatever. But just for the, for the sake of this video, I've just picked a image here with a white background, a water bottle, and I picked a lifestyle image of a water bottle. I know it's not the same one, so let's just pretend like it is. For the sake of the video um, and i just want to show you guys kind of the concept of white background versus not white background typically you want to have a white ground white background photo of everything that you uh, are selling it's usually going to work out the best as your main image on your product page also if you end up selling on other marketplaces like amazon amazon is going to require you to have a white background uh, in order to list so you might as well just make sure that you have a white background photo period now, you don't have to use Canva. You could totally use Photoshop or whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I just wanted to show you that it is this easy as just like literally dragging in an image. Like I could just drag this in here and this could be straight off of your phone and then just size it to wherever I want, just like that. And then when I download this, it's going to automatically be, uh, you know, scaled down to exactly that 2000 by 2000 aspect ratio that I chose initially. I'm going to delete that because I didn't want that in there just kind of showing you how easy it is to drag images in here and and size them and um, so I'm going to take these two images and I'm just going to move my little previewer here and say that this is going to be a JPEG that I'm out, I'm downloading now you can see that because I have the pro account which is only like mm, it's like eight or ten bucks a month or something I don't know um, it's very cheap but I can decrease the quality down to 80% and this is going to compress the image make the file sizes smaller without you know actually losing anything in the process now I have a bunch of images in here so I'm just going to choose the first two and click download and it'll download that here in just a second all right there's pictures of me <laughs> All right, so I have these two images, boom, just like that. I'm going to drag them over onto my other screen so they're not in the way. I'm going to come back to my big commerce store. 
Now I've already set up a test product. Uh, if you are in, still in the middle of setting up your test products, you can go to products view and click add. Um, I've already set one up and I basically have the name, the price, and a, I put it in the apparel category and I've just put, you know, some basic text there. Now, if I scroll down to the images, um, if your, first of all, if your product entry screen doesn't look like this, then it probably has tabs across the top, which means that you're in the V2 UI. This is the V3 UI, but for the purposes of images, it works the same way. So you're going to either scroll down or click on the images and video in the sidebar, or you're going to click on the images tab at the top, and that's going to get you to a screen that looks like this. Now, it says you can drag and drop images to upload them. And so I'm going to do just that. I'm going to just drag both of these in here. And you can see that the images are here. If I click save right now, then I can click into the product. And you'll see that my images are already live, right? But there's a couple things I need to do differently. First of all, you know, I want this white background image to be my main image on the product page. So let's do that first. All I have to do to do that is to grab this little handlebar thing, the little six dots, we're calling that a handlebar. You can see your, your mouse indicator changes to a hand. I think you guys can see that on my screen. Um, and then drag it up. So whatever is in the first position here is going to be the first image. And, um, so if I come back here to the front end and click refresh, then you'll see that now the white background image is the first one, right? And, you know, if you had three or four or five, you can just keep on going with them down. And in your alternative thumbnails, this one's going to be the first one. This one's going to be the second one. Next one's going to be the third one, et cetera, et cetera. So you can manually order them by, by dragging them up or down. If you need to delete one, cause you got too many, you can hit the little delete button here. Um, there is something else that we need to do, which is we need to add a description for each one. So I'm going to just write test bottle and test bottle in this one. Now, <clears throat> these aren't, you know, great SEO because I'm not really targeting any keywords except for maybe bottle in this case. Um, but it is important to fill these in. Otherwise, you have images on the page that, you know, when Google you know, checks out your page, they're not going to know what these images are. So this is, this is going to put your image alt text on the page. And if you have, you know, somebody that does SEO, scan your site or do an audit of your site, they're going to come back with a whole bunch of things to fix if you don't put this stuff in here, because, you know, it's really important for indexing. It's really important for accessibility for you to tell Google in the world what these images are about. So imagine somebody that is visually impaired comes to your site and they can't really see what the image is. Their, you know, their readers will tell them what the image is by reading this out. So, um, you know, be good to the world, fill this in for every product that you have. So that's one thing that we needed to do is we need to just fill these in. The next thing that we need to do is we need to talk about the um, product parts, right? So I'm just gonna leave it like this here for a second. And then I'm going to open up the apparel category so we can see this product in the apparel category. All right. So here it is. Here's my white background image. Here's a bunch of cool camper light hats. Welcome to come buy one. And, but let's say I don't want this white background image to be my category image. And you can see that, let's see, did I do that in any of these cards? Uh, no, I didn't, but, um, Let's say, let's say you have a scenario where you don't actually want that same white background image to be your product card image. Maybe you have like a gray background image or a lifestyle image that you want to be uh, authoritative for wherever that product shows up in a product card. These are called product cards whenever they show up in a feed. So examples of product cards would be on your category pages. Uh, if it shows up in a related products uh, grid on a product page, if it shows up on your homepage, like in your you know featured featured products list or, or whatever there's you know quite a few scenarios where it could show up in a product card scenario and you don't have to have the same image on your product card for that product and i see people all the time do this where you know for a certain portion of them maybe they'll show a lifestyle image or 
Maybe for all of them, they want to show a gray background image on cards, but a white background image on the product page. So it's up to you what you want, but I'm going to show you how to do it if you want it different. So number one, if I just want it to be the same, I want the main image on the product page to be first, and I want the thumbnail radio button set here. If I want this one to be my product card image, then I'm going to just change this uh, radio button here to pick the one that I want authoritative for the product cards. So if I click OK there, and I come back here and refresh. Now you see that the lifestyle image showed up here, which was image number two on the product page. And if I click into the product, then it's still showing the white background image right there. <clears throat> I can't tell you how many people I've had to show that to, how many people didn't realize that, you know, big commerce will do this natively right out of the box. And so, you know, you can, you know, you can make your store quite a bit cooler if you want to up your photo game and just know that it's already built, you know, right there by default, which is really, really nice. Um, let's see, is there anything else to go over? Um, you know, BigCommerce will size down your images, so you don't have to worry about really the size. I do suggest people make it at least, you know, 2000 by 2000, so that, you know, if you have a max resolution image, that it'll be uh, zoomable, is that a word? And so here's what I'm talking about by zoomable, right? This box right here, on this theme is probably, I'm guessing 500 by 500 is what it's showing. But again, I loaded this in at 2000 by 2000. And so the reason is when I zoom over it, the zoom is showing you that 2000 by 2000 pixel image. And so that's how you get the zoom effect. So if I loaded this in at 500 by 500 and it's in a 500 by 500 box, then when I hover over it to zoom, there wouldn't be anything to zoom because there's no additional detail. So zoom doesn't actually like, um, it doesn't stretch the picture out. It shows you the unshrunk version of it. And so that's why having right. that, that max resolution image in there is really important is to get the zoom right. And look how crisp this looks, uh, you, know, how, you know, when I loaded this at 2000 by 2000. Now, most of the Zoom windows on BigCommerce themes, just so you know, if you don't load the image at twice or twice the size of the of the box that it's going to go into, uh, then it won't zoom at all. So let's say you have a 500 by 500 uh, box and you load a 700 by 700 image. Uh, most of the themes are just not going to zoom in at all. So you do want to make sure that it's at least twice the size of the box that it's going into. So if it's 500 by 500, you want it to be at least a thousand by a thousand, the, you know, the pictures that you load. Um, but again, I would suggest maybe 2000 by 2000, because I think that's kind of a sweet spot detail wise. Um, you know, if you go crazy big, like say you have a professional photographer take, you know, super high res images for you and they're 5,000 by 5,000. Uh, I mean, you, you're probably going to be zooming in too much at that point. <laughs> and, you know, you're looking at a really big file size on the page for the sake of zoom and 2000 by 2000 is going to be a much smaller file size and still totally detailed enough to uh, make your product look awesome on the product pages. If I go on this other one, you can see that, yeah, it zooms in awesome too. So I think I covered just about everything, you know, Photoshop or Canva to edit them 2000 by 2000 is a really good size. Make sure they're all the same aspect ratio, preferably squared. You're going to save yourself tons of time doing it right the first time. Um, if you, if your images are all over the place right now, um, you know, at some point you're going to want to redo them. So when you get around to redoing them, just redo them, right? Redo them all to be square, redo them all to be 2000 by 2000. And, um, you can use the thumbnail to select a different image for the product cards. All right. I think that just about covers it. Hopefully you guys uh, found this helpful. And um, if you did find it helpful, hit the like button, leave me a comment. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Let me know if there's something else you guys want to learn. You know, I make these videos every week. So whatever you guys leave me as a comment might be what I shoot next week. Um, if you're, oh yeah, by the way, Join our free community at joinecommercegrowth.com. And if you need a developer, hit me up at epicdesignlabs.com and let's chat about your project. All right, thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one.